Why is it that you often wear a mask inside your house, and but you don't wear a mask inside this, when you're recording from the school? <laughs> um, because when I'm at school, I'm in my classroom and nobody else is oh, around. Yeah. And then uh, here I have people working on my bathrooms. And so, uh, oh, okay. yeah, it's, this is why I actually prefer to go to school, um, you know. Okay. I don't, I, yeah, it's, as you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to wear a mask. And uh, especially if you have glasses, it kind of fogs up your glasses and it's just kind of stupid, but got to do what you got to do. They should be done maybe next week, but hopefully too, uh, you and I will be back in school soon enough. It would also be kind of nice for those of you who are, uh, my Thursday, Friday, no, my Monday, Tuesday students, if we don't have to go to the community room, like if they say that we don't need to six feet between us, we only need three feet, maybe we can cram you all into the other classroom. I don't like having to scurry off to, uh, to that classroom and then break the rules by, uh, you know, going the wrong way on the, the one way <laughs> between, uh, like the office in my classroom, because it's an extra five minutes, as you know, or four minutes to walk around. Sometimes it's really a pain in the butt. I'll wait for a little bit more. Hello, Danielle, because it was my fault that I didn't put up a link for you guys. Hi, Macklin. Uh, I'm not super worried about the uh, reading quizzes from today or from yesterday. Yesterday, if you did the reading quiz, thank you, you're, you're wonderful. Uh, it, it was about the, the rule or the reign of Napoleon III. Um, maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow and then um, we'll push off what I really like to talk about, which is the unification of, uh, of the German states and the unification of the Italian states until semester two. And uh, and so tomorrow we'll get together. We'll talk a little bit about Nap Three, Napoleon the Third, um, I think, and then uh, and then we will, um, you know, we'll have the the final exam or the the LEQ on uh, on Tuesday. I forgot uh, that we don't have school on Monday. So today I just wanted to talk about the LEQ. Just go over it one more time. Answer any questions you have um, and uh, and stuff like that. So feel free to. Um, to ask if you if you got something that you uh, you know that you want to talk about or ask about, uh, I, I really uh, appreciate questions from you, and I really 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 want you to do your absolute best on this LEQ. I want you to get a lot of points for it and to see everybody's grades get boosted up. It's got a very similar, um, very generous grading scale, but as you know, it's kind of hard to get the points. And so, uh, you know, a, a, th a three out of six is fantastic, but, um, but, but we want, you know, I think all of us want to be in the A range, fours and fives and sixes. So hopefully we can get there. I'm not sure if the DBQ or if the LEQ is easier than the DBQ or, or vice versa. Um, it's kind of pers pers personal preference sort of thing, I think. But let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm not going to show you anything that you haven't already seen before, but um, I do just want to give you the chance to ask some questions again. I think we've looked at, uh, let me see what I got here. Let's see. In AP Euro, we've got everything that we need down here in Schoology. And so the LEQ organization, we'll look at that uh, really quickly one more time. Okay. So once again, there's three different kinds of essays. You got your compare and contrast. Uh, I think the compare and the contrast essay is fairly easy in terms of actually doing the comparing and contrasting. Uh, one of the ways that you get a point is by doing what it's asking you to do. And so by comparing and contrasting, showing what's similar and what's different, both in the thesis and then also in, in the body paragraphs is a, a way of you getting a point. You know, it might seem like, well, why wouldn't I do that in an essay that's a compare and contrast essay? But sometimes people just talk about stuff and don't, you know, set it up as a compare and contrast. I'm really looking for that when I'm trying to give you uh, a grade for that. 
I think the causation essay is is in like in a weird way the most difficult one because if you're talking about, for example, the printing press and and the printing press causing things or the printing press having some sort of effect, you really have to show me, I think, um, you know, you have to make a, a, a statement about how the printing press did cause the Reformation or how it did it did contribute to uh, the Renaissance or how it, it contributed to the Enlightenment or whatever. You really have to be pretty specific about that. So hopefully, uh, if you get a causation essay, um, you don't just say the printing compressor was invented and then you talk all about the Renaissance without making that connection. And then the change in continuity over time essay is, um, I, I think it's it's fairly easy. One of the things that you're talking about in one of your paragraphs and one part of your, your thesis is really about how things don't change over a period of 200 years or 300 years. And then the other thing is how they did change. And you can, you can, you know, look at that any way that you want to. It has to be over a fairly long period of time though. I think it has to be at least a hundred years. And then, then you're telling me how things were in the beginning, you know, and then how things uh, were in the middle and how things were in the end, in a sense. You're just telling me how things change over time. Whatever that looks like, whatever you think it is, just make sure that you're being pretty specific about how things change from beginning to the end of a longer period of time. I don't think you can get, you know, 20 years and, and think that there's continuity and change in a 20 year period. I think it's just too short. So if you're given, and, and maybe we should do that, if you're given um, a, a period of time to look at, try to use that whole period of time or as much of it as possible. So let's look at the, uh, what do we got here? Let's look at the LEQ prompt. And then we'll go we'll go backwards. <laughs> I hope that doesn't bother you too much. So here we've got some um, some changes and some uh, and some some some, some uh, continuities uh, over a longer period of time. We've got fifteen fifteen to eighteen fifteen, seventeen hundred to eighteen fifteen, fifteen fifteen to eighteen fifteen, and fifteen fifteen to eighteen fifteen. So a three hundred year period of time for the most part. And then if you look at Renaissance, what would that be like? Fourteen hundred to the Enlightenment. Oh, that's probably a four hundred year period of time or so. Three hundred, four hundred year period of time. So obviously, attitudes towards religion do change uh, from the Renaissance through the Enlightenment. Uh, it, it, it isn't always a continuum. It isn't always like just declining belief um, or the position of the, of the aristocracy of the nobles. Once again, sometimes the nobles are up, sometimes the nobles are down. And that depends on what's going on historically. Uh, th there are some continuities with religious belief. There are some continuities with, with the nobility and so on during that period of time, just like with roles of women or the economic roles of women. What's going on during that period of time and uh, governmental absolutism up and down as well. There's some places where governmental absolutism is in decline, obviously during that period of time, and hopefully you, you'd be able to talk about those changes, but then in other places, it might be quite similar. Uh, any, I'm gonna pause for just a second. Does anyone have any questions about anything that I've just uh, just said to you? Okay. The um, the cause and effect essays. You know, once again, you really have to look at what that religious conflict is, and then and then how it's affecting European society in some way, shape, or form. Printing press leading to some changes, Atlantic trade leading to some changes, new political philosophies. Hopefully you know of a new political philosophy between 1615 and 1815 and how it's leading to changes in political rights. Uh, by the way, that one kind of reminds me, there is a cutoff, it's 1815. So don't tell me about the you know 1832 British reform, uh, reform bill that let more people um, you know, vote the great reform bill of 1832 or the chartists or anything like that. Cause that's out of time. So don't do that. 
Also, understanding what the question is about is really pretty important. Uh, this one here, this is kind of like the uh, the group of um, similarities and differences. This art and the the Renaissance art and the Baroque art uh, question. The reason that I underlined subject matter is because people were telling me, oftentimes when I used to give this in the past, people would tell me what the paintings looked like. You know, they would tell me it was more lifelike and they would tell me that um, that there was uh, perspective and things like that. But the question is really about the subject matter of Renaissance art and Baroque art. And in some ways they're similar and in some ways they're different. And so hopefully you could come up with an argument that uh, that could talk about that. Maybe find something that that they have that is that uh, that makes them the same or very similar, and then something that that uh, shoots off in different directions. Pausing for a moment for any of those things. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to remind you of is how you get points. It's a little bit more simple than what we've seen with the DBQ. We've got contextualization. So about five sentences, hopefully you're doing for your contextualization. And it could be, let's take that, um, let's take that printing press question. You know, what What did the printing press lead to basically is that five sentences about, um, you know, how the printing press came together, how it was created, why it was created, uh, the need for it, you know, literate public or whatever. Um, anything that you can think of that, that starts off big and then starts to kind of um, funnel down to a smaller, smaller, smaller topic until you get to your thesis statement, you know, your thesis statement is the printing press contributed to or caused or whatever this historical thing and that historical thing, and then and then you'd be done. Um, also, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying not to give you answers uh, already, but like this historical thing or that historical thing could also be your contextualization. So what, what the heck, I'll just talk about this. Let's say that you decided that the printing press is a main contributor to the enlightenment. Then your contextualization could be five sentences all about the enlightenment, if that makes sense to you. Pausing for just a moment for contextualization. So the contextualization can be about your subject that you're going to talk about? Correct, it, it can be whatever one of your paragraphs is devoted to. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you. So if it's, you know, there's this question about con uh, continuities and changes in the position of the aristocracy. And and then, you know, you're, you're relating that to um, two or three different periods of time and the change. And then, uh, and then the, the continuity is all, you know, it's the, basically the same from 1515 to 1815 in this other way. Uh, you could, in, in general terms, talk about feudalism, I think. You know, how did the aristocracy become the aristocracy with five sentences? Or whatever you decided those changes were um, in, in the position of the aristocracy, you could talk about those things in your contextualization first to just kind of set things up. As long as it's related to your thesis, I think your contextualization is going to be, um, is going to be uh, a chance at having it be, be point worthy. And then once again, it's about five sentences. Those sentences hopefully um, are, are sort of seamlessly woven together. It doesn't seem like five different facts. It seems like you're telling me, you know, um, one sentence leads to the next sentence anyway, to, and then you then you finally get to your thesis. So that's going to be worth a point. I'll just look at that and be like, oh yeah, five sentences. It looks good. It's an approximation. Um, you know, you told me whatever whatever it was, and it seemed like it was broad enough to um, to get you that contextualization point. Your thesis, uh, you know, you're being very specific in your thesis about 
whatever the prompt is, you know, you're telling me how things stayed the same and th things, how things changed for whatever, or you're telling me how this thing led to something that led to this thing and this other thing, or you're talking about how, you know, I don't know, um, British uh, political developments were similar to French de developments in this way, but they're different in some, some other way. You're being very specific. Uh, and, and that's the last thing that you're writing to me in that first paragraph. Questions about that? Perfect. Then once again, let me explain how you're getting two different points for your argument or for your evidence. This is kind of like the DBQ in a way where uh, the first evidence point, the first uh, evidence point is really about having some facts that are relevant to whatever it is that you're talking about. So if you're talking about the economic roles of women and you're telling me about the cottage industry, for example, you're just telling me about the cottage industry um, and, and maybe not using your words, your sentences to, to craft um, how the cottage industry was a change in, uh, in, in what was going on with, uh, with women's economic lives. Well, if you're just giving me information about the cottage industry, that's worth, worth one point. But if you've got great information about the cottage industry and it's really hammering home how that shows that women's economic lives were changing, then that's what the second evidence point there is. Supporting an argument in response to the prompt using specific and relevant examples of evidence. It's really supporting your thesis once again. Any questions about those two points? Usually I, I look, at, go ahead. How many like examples of evidence should we have in each paragraph? You know, a couple of good examples is probably the, the, the beginning of a successful answer. It, it really depends on, on what your evidence is. You know, is it, is it important enough? Um, is it, is it also specific enough? You know, sometimes you get things like um, women were doing different jobs. Well, you know, I need more information than that. What What's the change in their jobs from that period of time to that other period of time? So it's kind of like that. Um, you want important stuff. Um, for, let me just, I'll give you an example of that. Let's just say you, you, you went off on a tangent on prostitution for some reason. And, uh, and, and th that might be um, something that some group of women were doing, but it isn't, you know, it isn't the same as cottage industry, if that makes sense to you. Uh, it's, it's a small bit of, of information that only applies to some women. Cottage industry is larger than that or w whatever other thing that you, you can come up with. So it has to be both, uh, both significant but then also specific, and then once again that that second uh, that second inf that second fact point or evidence point is really about just really good uh, good evidence that fits your argument. I'm pausing. <laughs> good there, everybody. Okay. Once again, you also get one point if you are doing what. Uh, what the prompt asks you to do, whether it be compare these things or or talk about the cause or talk about how things changed and and uh, and remained the same, it would be really it, it's really nice to see that, of course, in your uh, in your thesis, you know these things were the same, but these things were different, or this thing caused this other thing by, or this changed, but at the same time, this um, this remained the same in your thesis, but then also in the body, body, body paragraphs as well. Hopefully every single first uh, body paragraph is just a restatement of what you're gonna be talking about. You know, this is the way that uh, religious belief changed over that 300 or 400 year, year period of time. And then different changes, you know, in the beginning it did this, in the middle it did this, towards the end it did that. If, I'm, if, I, if I find that in the essay, if I see that you're doing the comparison or the causation or the CCOT, then I'm more than happy to give you a point for that. The last little bit is, is kind of like that seventh point for the DBQ. Um, it, it, 
this is kind of a, a, a joke among uh, AP teachers in the sense that nobody's really sure how to give this point, <laughs> but it is, it's essentially a good essay in some way, shape or form. You got great evidence or uh, you're really doing the, the comparison well, or you're doing how, you know, there's this real balanced, um, you're showing me great evidence about how things change, but you're showing me great evidence about how things stayed the same. Um, maybe you're looking at this in, in kind of a different way or kind of a, a really cool, thoughtful way or analytical way, that would be worth that sixth point. But I would say um, just do your best to write a really good essay. And if the sixth point, sixth point comes to you, fantastic. Shoot for the other five points. And if you get those, um, a sixth point might be, you know, on its way too. Six points. I don't have the uh, the scale in front of me, but I promise you that it is really quite generous, just like the DBQ scale was. All right, questions for me. Crickets, okay. Um, do you, you want to look at uh, do you want to look at the prompts again and, and, and see if we, if there's anything we want to do with those? Oops. Is there any, are any of the, any of the prompts that you see? Whoops. Not really quite clear. Like what the heck is being asked? Well, I'm just, don't we have a presentation today? Like notes? No, I'm not going to give you notes today. I'm just going to do this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, we would totally run out of time, I think. I'll just do that tomorrow. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm less worried about... I, I just want you guys to do really, really well on, on the LEQ, I guess is my point. Are we going to have to be on a Google Meet while we do the LEQ? Uh, I think we will get together and uh, and then I will start the 40 minutes and then and so you don't have to be on the Google meet uh, for those 40 minutes but but I will start at a very specific time give you the two prompts and then say you now have 40 minutes and then I'm gonna you know oh, I'm gonna expect that you turn in the the your work after those 40 minutes so I think we should just touch it touch base um, and then get you started and then and then go from there Okay. But yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not super interested in all of you, you know. Um, I don't know, staying in the Google Meet or whatever. Uh, I'll I'll be available to you if you if you need me for something, you know. If you want to check something with me or whatever, that that's that's my job. And so I'll just hang out, and you guys can pop in and and say, now what was the, well? You can't ask me like fat questions now. Tell me about the Protestant Reformation again, Mr. Barron. But. Um, or how would you answer? How would you answer that, Mr. Barron? But you know, questions like, um, I don't know, whatever con contextualization is, or, or you know, I don't know. I'm just going to be around so so you can ask me questions. Mr. Barron, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. So you said that our contextualization isn't supposed to be the same or discuss similar topics as any of our paragraphs? No, I, I said that actually you could. If, there's the, if there is a relationship between um, whatever it is that you're, you're giving me a whole bunch of information about, um, then, then I think that, uh, that, that your contextualization could, could be about that. Okay, I thought you said it doesn't. Okay, thank you. No, it should. Yeah. So, like, if you if you look at um, the opening of the Atlantic trade, creating changes in European society, you know, obviously talking about how we get to Atlantic trade with five sentences would be uh, something that that would be very easy contextualization or obvious contextualization. The changes in European society, whatever that would be. Uh, in in a, paragraph one or paragraph body paragraph one or body paragraph two, I think you know depending on what you're talking about there, what's changing with European society, I think that could be the focus of your contextualization as well. 
Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, yeah, certainly. So is it really just random on our prompts or will there be like one from one section or and one from the other section? I'm, you know, I'm trying to decide that. Um, I like to joke that I let the Ouija board decide what your questions are, but uh, in reality, it's questions that um, that that I would enjoy reading. <laughs> your answers, I would enjoy reading more than uh, more than others, I think. And so, um, do do you want in on the real AP test? Uh, they have two different. Um, two different prompts for you to choose from, and it's the same skill. So uh, I, I could do that. In other words, I could give you two choices from um, uh, compare and contrast, or two choices from CCOT, or two choices from causation, or I could mix it up. And um, I don't know if you guys would have a preference of either of those two things. Would you like to see the same skill or would you like to see it mixed up? This is a, this is a chance for the first person to answer to be very powerful. <laughs> Mix it up a little. Okay. Mix it, up. mix it up? Good. All right. I'll I'll do that. I'll mix it up. But like I said on the real AP exam, it's going to be the same same skill, so just FYI. All right, well, I'm gonna hang out here uh, for the next however many minutes people wanna hang out and talk. Um, otherwise, you are, are free to go off and, and, uh, and, and do your day. Um, just once again for the, for the uh, LEQ, um, as long as you're not cutting and pasting stuff that you've already prepared, I think I'm probably pretty, pretty okay with that. If you prepared things before and um, and have them written down. I'd rather you not look at that stuff, but um, you know, I don't know. I'm just I'm just trusting that you're you're doing your best and uh, and and being honest about uh, about writing just from the top of your head and stuff. So, okay. Um, like I said, I'll hang out. Otherwise, you guys are free to go. And that was uh, this is being here is your ABA for the day, and so um, you don't necessarily have to do the reading quiz on um i think it's the beginnings of the uh of the unification of of uh, the italian states and the german states so don't necessarily worry about that if you've if you've been here and, and listened to me that, that was good enough and you know maybe work a little bit on these uh, over the course of the next few days and, and be really prepared for tuesday have a nice day i'll see you later thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I looked on the I looked on the calendar and there wasn't a link to join the meet, so yep. I assumed there wasn't a lecture or anything. So I just yep. did the reading. So that's okay. why I showed up late. Okay. Uh, Liam, I'll go ahead and post what we talked about. Just uh, so if you want to look at that, I was just All you right. know talking about the LEQ again. Cool. All right. Thanks. That was Thank my you. bad. That was my fault. But <laughs> obviously not having the uh, the link. It's all good. All right. Thanks, Mr. Baron. Yeah, Jackson. Uh, how many uh, LEQ prompts are we going to answer on the LEQ again? One. One. You'll, okay. you'll, you'll get two from that uh, that list of fifteen, and uh, and apparently they're going to be mixed in in the skill. One one of them will be you know compare and contrast, and one of them will be um, continuity and change over time, or or whatever the the mix happens to be, and those will kind of be random. So two of those fifteen from the list that you have, and then you just do one of them in forty minutes. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I just have a question. So would like a three out of six, is that going to be like an 85? I believe it's an 85, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, contextualization, a thesis, and some decent information. Well, actually, you know, you could also be doing the compare and contrast. And that would be a, a four for you. So. Um, I, I, th I think and I hope that the grades will be higher on the LEQ than on the DBQ. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was, I'm just, I'm just looking at my grade and seeing, seeing what it would be after the yeah. LEQ and all that. Yeah. Stuff. So three, three, which is, I think very doable is 85%. So. Okay. Um, and the thesis statement, the big, big part of it is 
it's the because, right? To get that point. Yeah. Well, um, yes. Uh, it, it, you're you're providing already in your thesis statement details about whatever it is that you're going to be talking about, um, and 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 so the because bit is. Um, you're not just saying, you know, there there were continuities and changes. Period. <laughs> that's you know, that's that's nothing. Or there were continuities and changes in the in the lives of and uh, the economic lives of women. Period. You know, you you need to kind of go comma or even do another sentence where you'd say, you know, something that really changed was they went from this to this occupation or these occupations were opened up, and then you know, at the same time, however. Um, women can continually through this period of time did this thing this other thing as as their economic the, the way that they made a living or whatever so it's just a little bit extra information so that i know where you're going with that yeah so it's the they made continuity and changes because blank yes and this then, is the continuity and this is the change and then those and then that's what you do for your evidence. exactly and that's okay. what you got in your paragraphs just providing then the details of the change and the details of the continuity. But I think you can figure out which one's going to be much longer. Uh, yeah. The continuity or the change? Um, the, uh, the change. Yeah. That's, like, history is, w when we study history, we study the stuff that changes, right? That's, that's yeah. the interesting stuff. And then there's this background stuff that we, we don't talk about because nothing's happening. You know, it's just the same old, same old. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, Sam. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Yep. You too.